Hello and welcome back to Sorted Food. Today we're diving into the world of vintage kitchen gadgets using highly effective modern day testing techniques. <laughs> and Ben Eberle. <laughs> Is anything like last time? Do I need a spare chef's jacket? <laughs> Underwear might be more appropriate. No, as in put some on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, okay, Ebers, lift the cloche. Oh, hello. Instantly, looks like a press. Mm. But what would you press? Oh, no, and are pressed. you impressed? I thought it was going to be like a big garlic press. Yep. Solidly made. It survived this long, Ebers. Don't break it now. <laughs> ah, this is annoying because it's probably really obvious and easy. Ebers, this is the QB handheld ice cube crusher from Westmark in Germany. <laughs> Toss in a cube or two, squeeze the crush, and done. It's a simple, effective kitchen and bar accessory. So this dates back to the early 1960s. Westmark, the company, exported clever, practical kitchen tools around the world, and we actually purchased this from the US. There's the original box. Love the original boxes, oh, no. right? They just look so cool. So when you have a play with it, see if it works, and then we want to use the crushed ice in making a caprina. Wonderful. Exactly what you want at 9.30 on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that seemed easy. With your tiny muscles. I thought you were going to struggle, yeah. and I'm actually annoyed that it's worked. Okay, the only bit I'm just trying to get the hang of, it, it falls apart easily yeah. in order to act as a scoop as well, so it says on the box. But Go on, Evers. Leverage is excellent. Well, it really does work. The very first patented ice crusher is believed to have come from the US in Massachusetts in the 1880s. Before this, bartenders would literally smash ice in leather bags with big wooden mallets. In the 1940s, refrigerators, fridges, were more and more popular. They contained ice compartments, so you're able to keep ice cold in the home. And after World War II, um, home cocktails were far more popular and accessible. Um, so crushed ice became a thing, and it seems to work. It does work. It's very simple. Physics is wonderful with leverage. It, it just it functions. So a Brazilian caparina, some demerara sugar goes in. It relies heavily on crushed ice. Muddle, muddle, muddle to get all the oils out of the lime as well as the juice. One Brazilian, two Brazilian. And then... Get it in there. Look at that. The scooping mechanism oh. is working so well. Shock. You've got a lengthy spoon there if you want to give it a proper vigorous zhuzh. Huh. Whoa! Nice. Reusable. So we reckon we can trace this back to the mid-60s, at which point it sold for $1.64. Well, I can tell you that the equivalent of that today is $14.50 or £10.50. Thank you for doing the inflation. You're the welcome. Okay, so with that in mind, how much do you think I purchased it for on a popular online auctioning site? eBay. I would say, I mean, I can't imagine you paid the relative price of $14.50. Or maybe you did. Maybe it's a tenner. Yeah, maybe a tenner. I paid £14.95. Great. The fact that it's 60 years old and still stands the test of time, it still works, it's still durable, it's still, it does exactly what you expect it to do. I, I would have one by my non-existent cocktail bar. So Ebers, the QB handheld ice crusher from Westmark. Does it stand the test of time? Or is it best left behind? I think that has absolutely stood the test of time. It's good that, as is that. Okay, Ebers number two, lift the cloche. The world's fastest food preparation appliance. It slices, wedges and dices. It's the Vegematic. You want to swap places or something? I'm just reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ebers, this is the Vegomatic, which is invented by Samuel J. Popiel around 1963. It's a completely new, unique device. Vegematic will slice, dice, or wedge vegetables, fruits, cheeses, boiled eggs, cooked shrimp, and many types of canned, prepared meats in just seconds. We probably owe a massive portion of our video views to the Vegematic and the inventor of the Vegematic and his family, because his family were the ones that really started the kitchen gadget phase of our world. So this product was actually the very first product to feature the As Seen on TV logo. It's a real slice of history. It's such simple engineering, but it kind of worked. Well, I presume it works. The bottom ring stays put. The top ring has three numbers around it. If you have it on number one, you get thin slices. If you move it to number two, you get a dice or a cube. If you move it to number three, you then get thick slices. All right, so we thought we might give a few of the functions a little bit of a whirl. Uh, we'd like to make some onion rings, thick slice. 
Mm. We'd like to make some French fries. Uh, and then <laughs> we'd like to make a tomato and jalapeno salsa. Let's do some French fries first. Skin on. Like this and like this, eh? How quick was that? That was quick. French fries. Now, Evans, one question to ask you. You're a chef. Could you have done that quicker by hand? Could not have done it as consistently. Could not have done it as quickly. Could not have done it as easily. Let's get me in the fryer. What would you onion rings? Onion has been peeled. It can go in. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, Ebers. Oh dear. Oh. 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 He's just punching an onion now. It, oh, no. no. I think we found its limits. You know, there's a there's a chance that the blades have become, you know, less sharp over time. In the spirit of fair testing, let's go again with a smaller onion. Well, there you go. Oh, I didn't put my ring in. That was just single ring. <laughs> I mean, how is it? It has worked. <laughs> Onion one, maybe too big. Could I have done it better with a knife? I would say yes, because you get a bit. You could actually choose the the thickness rather than have to have the set. You really cry. And you wouldn't have this, because I think this is bruising the onion and it's causing yeah. splitting of onion membrane and all that stuff. But it does work. Very simple batter: just flour, salt, smoked paprika and then a sparkling liquid. I've gone for tonic water plus some ice to keep it super chilled. Just to the thickness, it's gonna coat the onion rings. We'll fry them off as soon as the chip's done. Salt, Cajun spice, a bit of Cajun fries. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy on kitchen roll. Onion rings can go in. Should we try a salsa of sorts? Yes, please. So, well, something as wet as a tomato. <laughs> It shot up my arm. <laughs> I don't think the plunging was fast or brisk enough. Oh, Evers. A few onion rings. Okay, let's try, if it was pre-sliced, what I'm scared. No. Mm. My hunch with this is, potatoes, brilliant, because they're sturdy, you saw how quickly they went through. Onions, also good, because they're half cut for you in layers. Everything else, a bit tricky. Onion, dice. Not dice. But wedges. But now, if you read the instructions, it then says you put them back in and then it will give you a dice. I mean, I know what you're trying to say. You're like, you could just do that and go again. Is it broken it? Now, granted, it's old and therefore probably isn't as razor sharp as it could be. But I still don't think the dicing of those kind of ingredients is very good. Well, let's talk about money. Back in sort of 1963, when this was originally sold, you could purchase this for $7.77. Cents, and if we work that out today, that's the equivalent of about sixty-six fifty-seven dollars or forty-eight pounds. So, how much do you think we paid, Mike paid, on that popular auction website? Twenty-five quid. It's twenty-five dollars, eighteen pounds. It's cool. What I like is the fact that it started the the movement of kitchen gadget appliance. The Vegematic. Do you think that it's a slice of history? Or is its existence just a mystery? There's no doubt it's a slice of history. I just think in its current state, potatoes is all it's good for. Ebers, number three, lift the cloche. It's really much of a guessing game here. No, it says it right on the box. Yeah, I forgot to unbox it. <laughs> Table chef, party time or every day. So basically it's like a little fondue set. This is the Table Chef, and we think it's from the 1970s. It's a rose-wooded handle stainless steel top table for cooking, chafing, or warming food. So chafing dishes, synonymous nowadays with keeping food warm in hotel buffets for breakfast, I think, but actually have roots back in the 16th century um, when early cookbooks recognized the delicacy of items such as egg, cream, and fish. And so they use chafing dishes to keep those things warm. Fast forward to the 50s, 60s, 70s, as dinner parties became more and more popular, this is a great way of keeping plates warm, but also fondues. You know I love food that is immersive and has something that happens, which is why, if we cast our mind back to things like Big Night Inn, it was always big sharing platters. If there was something we could do or mix or season or carve at the table, it was excellent. It's cool, it's a talking point, it gets people together. I like it. You put it on the table and it does your chefing bit. So in your miniature saucepan, um, we filled that with some um, biofuel, so stuff we can burn, it's 
okay for food and the environment. And you can obviously control the oxygen circulation by twisting the little handle. This is not new to me, this is not strange to me, this is just very familiar and if you're hosting, it's a bit of fun. Have they sort of become less relevant to society? I think styles have changed. I don't think you'd want or need this at home to warm plates or keep food warm. You cook it and then you serve it more so than keep a buffet going, well, in the home anyway. You've got a selection of dippable treats. I mean, I'm having all the fun, but I feel like it's a very social thing and doing it on your own is a little weird. I mean, that's the whole concept of a fondue as well, isn't it? Doing it at a dinner party. It does just make it really fun and interactive. So back to the gadget itself, it's working, right? It gets hot, but yeah, I think it's more about keeping food warm as opposed to cooking, um, and it keeps it at a very regulated temperature. Having this in front of you, people are gonna be very happy um, at the end of a meal. It still would put a smile on people's face, I just don't think it's as relevant, but that's the point of vintage, right? Okay, so let's broadly talk about price. Chafing dishes around this sort of size um, in the 1970s range, anywhere from a pound, because the new money came in during the 1970s, to four or five pounds for huge, big electric jobbies. Do you want to take a guess at how much I paid for this? 18 pounds 50. 18 pounds on the button. Wow. Very, very close. Well, Ebers, the question for you, the table chef, is it still relevant or are you ambivalent? I think with some very niche applications and very niche groups of friends, maybe. But on the whole, ambivalent. Are you ready for your final gadget? Indeed. This one comes with a plug. Lift the cloche. What on earth is that? What I can tell you, Ebers, is that this was incredibly highly requested by the community following our last Vintage Gadgets video. It looks like something out of Dr. Frankenstein's lab. It looks like a torture chamber, doesn't it? So it's going to heat these things. That's the only thing I can imagine, that you, these are skewers that go into something and cook it from the inside out. Ebers, this is the Presto Automatic Hot Dogger. <laughs> the Hot Dogger. Now you can cook one to six hot dogs in just 60 seconds. There's no waiting or boiling, and this new fast cook way keeps the meat juicy, cooks it clear through with a delicious flavour. So essentially, those spikes are what you put your sausage on. And then it cooks it from the inside out with electricity. It electrocutes using the your water, Yeah, using the water content of the hot dogs as a conductor for electricity to heat up the hot dogs. I mean, why not? I mean, a microwave just agitates the water particles in something to the point that it heats up. So. Why not? <laughs> we Why could find that. Not? We could find the answer to that question in about a minute or so. Let's get some hot dogging on. And thread these on here. Pop your sausage on a spike. It's got a good, <laughs> good arc. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? I never it? thought I'd be doing this. So surprisingly, we couldn't actually find that much information about the hot dogger online. I know your problem. You had safe search on. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. I wasn't looking on Ever's dark web. <laughs> so this is from mid-60s to early 70s. It's from that time, particularly in America, as we mentioned before with the Vegematic, where home kitchen gadgets were starting to become all the rage. We've got you a voltage converter as well, because this is obviously a, an American product and uh, operates on 110 volts of electricity, whereas all of our plugs in the UK operate at 240. Would 240 volts do it in 30 seconds? We were wondering whether you'd want to find that out maybe later. I kind of was nervous when I opened it, but I think I'm okay with it now. Okay, and we're off. It hasn't gone bang. There's no smoke. Halfway, we're at 30 seconds in. It's definitely something happened. Now they're beginning to change colour. We'll stop that. Turn that off the switch. Stop that. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Welcome to Ebba's Hot Doggers Deli. Over oh, there, crispy onions. Crispy onions. Another gadget that's been around for a long time that still works. I want to know what they taste like. Hand them over here. Cheers. 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 Tastes exactly the same as a normal cooked frankfurter. They're already cooked. 
All you're doing is heating them up. It's done that. The only thing missing is a Vegematic onion ring. It worked. I've got a question. If we doubled the voltage, could we halve the cooking time? Maths and physics says yes. Health and safety risk assessment says, <laughs> really? <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. Absolutely do not. So we've gone for the UK adapter, but now we're going into high voltage. Danger, danger. danger. <laughs> what is my life? Ebers, what, are you just going to go straight in? Because then it's just going to kick off. Yeah. Okay. It's got no on button. It's got no on or off. It's we'll just, just get, plug okay. it in and go. Okay. Oh, got one, the old. He's in. A much quicker sizzle. Oh, wow. I can hear some stuff happening. It's steam or smoke. I think it could be, they've expanded. They're going to go smell? bang. I'm going to stop at 30 seconds. It smells like burning flesh. This is why they're called Ebers bangers. is sparking. <laughs> Let's have a look. Right, we're now unplugged all, we're all safe. Oh, they've split. That was in 30 seconds. They look sad, don't they? The shape's unfortunate because of the way they have to be wedged in. It's cooked, that's for sure. You're joining me with this. If we go down, we go down together. Perfectly good sauce. Oh, I feel like they're really wet. <laughs> that's really all, wet. That's wetter than the last one. I'm not sure that does taste nice. Much more of a chewy bounce to it. It's fascinating, <laughs> but perhaps stick to manufacturer recommendations. Okay, but so when this was sold in the sort of mid to late 60s, uh, this sold for $9.99. Counting for inflation, that's about $80 or 46 pounds. How much do you think Mike paid on an auction website, eBay? Oh, I don't know, it's an irrelevant game. How about 15 pounds? <laughs> uh, we paid $40, so about 28 pounds. Uh, that is great YouTube material. Well done, boys. <laughs> well, Ebers, we'll finish strongly. Is this a hot dogger or is it just a bit of a shocker? I think it needs a separate on-off switch. <laughs> Otherwise, it functions, it works, it does the job. I quite like it. It's a hot dogger. Well, over to you guys. What was your favourite gadget that we reviewed today? Comment down below, let us know. And what other vintage gadgets should we test? should Ben test in the future, send us them below and we'll get hold of some. You can also join in the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag Sorted Gadgets. Can we up our insurance premium next time? We've got you covered. Life insurance. Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> This is our Meal Packs app. It takes the useful bits of what's in a chef's brain to help us normals take the hassle out of midweek cooking and we'll save on food waste and we'll save on money. Try it free for a month or for a very limited time, sign up for a year and get one of our cookbooks free. He loves to make a gif of himself, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, right.